friends! Welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lauren Burleson and I am the Canvas Queen. On this channel, we like to talk all things Canvas and I give you some quick tips and tricks if you are using the Canvas LMS platform. So, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing how to organize content in Canvas. This is actually a four part video trying to chunk it down for you guys so that way you have shorter videos you can choose which ones you want to watch. Um, so this is one of four and in this video we'll be discussing course layout. Now of course if you would I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to this channel and like this video it just helps me reach a bigger broader audience. Okay, so we'll be discussing organizing content in Canvas. This is for uh, teachers, educators, administrators who are at the beginning or intermediate to advanced level of Canvas. So really everyone. And um, we'll just kind of review how you can organize your course uh, in, so in Canvas and also outside of Canvas so that for the following years, Canvas is very simple and easy for you to use. So all you have to do is really copy your course and import it for the next year. So let's get started. All right, so just to review what we'll be discussing, we're gonna go over course layout, organizing modules in Canvas, assignment templates, and then lastly, we'll go over clickability and flow. Within course layout, which is our first topic, uh, we're going to review starting with your homepage and choosing a homepage, student audience, course navigation, and then using modules. So if you're not using modules, you should, and we'll go over that. If you are using modules, we'll kind of discuss and review how you can easily organize them. Okay, so when you first log into your course or you're getting your your new Canvas uh, course, what you'll see is this blank page. And it's very intimidating and a little shocking because you as the instructor have to fill it in. And so how are you going to do that? What are the best ways uh, in which you can make your life and also the life of your uh, students easier? So let's kind of go over those things. So I believe the first step with your Canvas course is really reviewing your Canvas homepage. This is kind of like an outline to your course. It's that landing page of where do you want your students to go to to access the material, right? What information is super important that they need to have really easy access to so when they click from their dashboard into your course, that's the first thing they see. So using a Canvas homepage, I think is best. So meaning an actual page as the front page. Um, I know you can of course use course modules. That is a definite option. I've used that for, for many, I would say three years that I taught, I used just actually the course modules um, as the homepage. So they click on the um, their course card from the dashboard and then all they see is the modules list. That is nice. I think a page is better because you can actually put the, like I said before, put the important information in and then navigate them, your students of course, um, a little bit better. So course modules you can definitely use, assignment lists you can use, a syllabus. I would suggest if you're like high school level, a syllabus is not a bad option for your main homepage. Um, and then of course there's also the course activity string. But for me, I think, and for most educators that are in that K through 12th grade level, a, a, a page for your front landing homepage of your Canvas course I think is best. And I think this because teachers get to organize the page however they like. It's easy to create virtual classroom management routines. So just like you create classroom management within your class of, you know, here's where my papers go to be submitted. This is what you do to check out to go to the bathroom. All those like different things. Um, you can easily incorporate those on your Canvas homepage and customize it yourself where the other options don't really give you that customizable feature. 
Uh, so then lastly, it becomes a reference page for your students. So everything that is significant to your class, all the important information is right there for your students and they don't have to like search search for it within what I call the canvas black hole, which you can create yourself. You can create your own black hole, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to how you don't do that. All right, so to create your Canvas homepage, I suggest just drawing it out. I honestly think that is the easiest thing that you can do. What are the most important things for you as an educator to incorporate into your Canvas course? So I always have at the very top a welcome banner so that way when students click on the Canvas course card, they know they're in the right course. Um, having my contact information, my course outline, so essentially just a page where they can review the course syllabus. Um, if you are online, distance learning, uh, you know, having a live lesson button where you click your Zoom calls or your Google Meets, I think is also super important to have at the top. And then um, you're, you can actually link, so creating buttons or just a hyperlink that has all of your lessons that are linked to the modules really helps your students navigate your course and also helps you stay organized as well. Because when your students are organized and you're organized, it's just very nice. Uh, then below that, I um, actually have a daily agenda posted. So this is an embedded Google slide which just gives a list of things that students are to do. I like to embed a Google slide because then I just edit the Google slide and when it's updated, it updates it automatically to my Canvas page. I don't have to keep editing my home page, which is really nice. And I'll show you how I do that in a little bit. Uh, for parents, I always like to leave a, a section on my home page that is for them. So this will be like a hyperlink that takes them to course expectations or how to become um, an observer of their, their child in the course and like frequently asked uh, Canvas questions or um, sometimes a newsletter. And then expectations. So this is most of the time uh, something that is like within the syllabus or um, my school will provide me, you know, the school expectations and so I'll hyperlink that as well. And lastly, you can see their Canvas frequently asked questions. So this is usually a hyperlink that takes them to the Canvas learning management website and just kind of allows my students easy access to learn how to do certain things that they might be confused about. So just writing your outline and then like knowing this is what I'm going to have on my Canvas page or these are the important things that I need to have. What does that look like? I think is really vital for all educators to stay organized. And once you've done it once, uh, you don't have to do it again because it's saved and you can just make copies of it. So before I show you my Canvas course, I just really quickly wanted to talk about requirements because every school or school district even will have a specific guideline um, for Canvas that they want to make sure all of this information is the same or maybe your you know your home page is supposed to look very similar to um, you know all the other teachers at your school so just make sure before you start creating all of your content that you check with either your you know your school or your district um, and review the course checklist for canvas so I'm going to show you what my current Canvas homepage looks like. I'm going to click here on my course card and my Canvas page will load. So you'll see here I have um, some tabs at the top that provides all of my additional information. Uh, but this is my main homepage. So I have my welcome banner. I have my ways to contact me, social media that my students follow me on. Um, so that's just like extra fluff because I'm the weird social media science teacher. Then we have um, some buttons here. So this takes the students, if I click this, it takes them directly to a page um, that starts the orientation outline for my students. 
I actually have this entire module, so I'll show you real quick when I go to modules. This entire module zero, oops, there we go. This entire module zero is posted in um, this part. This is a different part. Uh, this part is posted in comments if you would like to have it yourself. So let's go back to the home page real quick. So in addition to this module zero button, I also have all of my different modules here. Uh, so when I click on these, it will take them to the a page that has all of my lessons. And each one of these lessons is tied to a different module. So when I click on lesson three, it's going to take me to module one, lesson three. So this really helps my students navigate the course because your modules page, as you can see here when I scroll up, it can get very long. You can, of course, collapse everything and have easier access, but I like my students to be able to just click twice and they're automatically there in the course where they need to be. So that's just additional um, and helps my students and me stay organized. So back on my homepage at the bottom, I have an animated Bitmoji classroom, which is just extra. This was really important for me when we were distance learning and I just kept it because I thought it was cute. Um, but then below here, this is my embedded Google slide. So you can see here I have all of the dates for my students. They can click around, go back to that main page where I have like a quote of the week but they can click on their days and access their assignments here, um, which makes it easy for students too. Let's say that are absent and at home, uh, they can know to go straight to the homepage, access the to-do list, and then that's when they know where they would go within the Canvas course to complete their assignments. So that's just a quick little outline of my homepage. Now to choose your homepage, you would go over to the right side here and click on this button, choose homepages. Here is where I have front page um, or page as front page, but of course you can click any other one of these um, to be your homepage. But I do suggest pages. Pages I think is the best. Now, if you want to embed a Google slide into a page, I have just quickly opened a page here. I've created a blank one. To embed any Google slide into a page, you have a couple options. You, of course, can click on your Drive button and your Google Drive will pop up. You'll select any files that are available. So then it will pop up like your most recent ones. I will select this one real quick, just like the calendar. It will then attach. And there you go. Now I have my calendar um, embedded into the page. Now if you don't like, there, like these black spaces here are just a little bit annoying. You can always go into the this is called down here the um, HTML editor, and you can always adjust the width. So let's just keep the width the same, or we could do actually, let's do 100%. That always makes it a little bit easier. And then of course you can adjust the height. So I'll like click back and forth. You can see now it's all the way across the page. Those black bars have kind of minimized. So that means I need to make it a little, the height a little shorter. So I'll go down to like, 650 and we'll see what that looks like and you'll see they become smaller and smaller as you just kind of play around with it so I'll just do 620 and I'm happy with that so then I'll just scroll down click save for now and then I have an embedded Google slide right here which is really nice for students within Canvas to have access to. So your outline, so meaning your like homepage, of course, depends on your grade level. So as you saw as an example of mine for secondary, primary is probably going to require um, a few more buttons, maybe every day, um, buttons where they click on Mondays, activities, Tuesdays, etc. 
Um, maybe you know you have a bigger button for announcements. So making sure that you write down your needs based on your grade level is very important. Another thing uh, to keep in mind with your homepage or just your course in general is the navigation bar. So having um, minimal uh, navigation options, so meaning, um, you know, for primary, just making it maybe three is super important, like home, modules, announcements. Uh, secondary is able to have a few more because they tend to do a bit more um, within Canvas. So, you know, besides having home modules announcements, maybe they can, you know, look at their grades and review their what assignments they're missing within their grades navigation tool. Or um, they can go to quizzes right away, accessing discussions, having their Google Drive available because they need to sync their Google Drive a little bit easier or putting that responsibility on them. And then people is also another option um, that I have because if my students are gonna be doing group work, they have to access uh, the people navigation tool. So we'll review how you can organize this and set this up um, a little bit later. Okay, so we've talked about setting up your homepage and organizing that. We've talked about um, having, you know, specific navigation tools. Now let's talk about, which I think is the most important thing in Canvas, is using modules. Um, so it's for every grade level. How you organize them is dependent on how you want to do it. There's no right or wrong way. So we have examples here for primary. Um, this module right here for module zero, as you can see in the middle, is for all grades. And I actually have some templates already for um, modules within Commons if you want to go check those out. You just have to search Canvas Queen uh, to find me and my resources. Then we have over here, this secondary one is a module that I've used in the past. So, if, you know, you have your warm-ups at the top, class less, uh, or lesson presentations, and then like the body of the lesson where they're gonna complete their assignments at the bottom. All right, friends, well, thank you so much for finishing this video. Again, there are multiple parts of this four-part series. So if you would like to see the other parts of the video, they will be linked in the description below. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time.